Hey, what's up guys? Today I'll be doing a review on the Primero Made in Mexico boxing gloves. So check it out. Hey guys, Carlo here. Today I'm doing a review on the Primero Made in Mexico boxing gloves. Got mine in the white, red, and black colorway. 12 ounces in lace-up. You could also get these gloves in Velcro, anywhere between eight and 18 ounces. And there are several colorways you could choose from that are made in small batches that you can check out on Primero's website. As usual, I will put the link down below in the description box. So you can click on that and check it out if you want to. The gloves are made of full, genuine cowhide leather on the exterior of the glove with welted seams for added durability and they utilize a latex foam padding over the knuckle area that has a medium to soft density to it, which we'll discuss in more detail here in a second. Now, these are gloves that have been on my radar for quite some time now. When I first initially saw these gloves, it was actually on Instagram, and what really piqued my interest about the gloves was the fact that they really reminded me, just from the, the shape of the glove, of the original Casanova boxing gloves I did a review on years ago, uh, which is now Nikali boxing. So that's what really piqued my interest about them, together with the fact that a lot of people were uh, reaching out to me and asking if I've done a review on them. They'd leave comments on the videos or send me a direct message just saying, hey, you know, there's no reviews on this brand Primero. Can you check them out? So it was kind of a long time coming. I knew I was going to eventually get my hands on these gloves and decided to pull the trigger. Um, and these gloves do really remind me of the Casanova gloves. Now, granted, I know a lot of these smaller boutique companies like Primero, a lot of these smaller boutique companies in Mexico that started popping up, oftentimes they have um, the same manufacturer or you know they're all somewhat kind of related when it comes to the manufacturing process. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if these are maybe made by the same company that makes uh, Nikali or Casanova, uh, just based on the way they feel, the shape, the type of materials that are used uh, with these gloves. Now, for from a design standpoint, when you're looking at this glove, this is a 12 ounce glove. I opted to go with 12 ounces because one thing I noticed on the website, when you, when you look at the description for these gloves, um, they do mention that the hand compartment does have a wide pocket. Now, personally speaking, I'm not a fan of the wide pocket, uh, but again, to each their own, some people might prefer that. It does have that traditional Mexican feel to it. So if you're looking for that traditional Mexican style glove with a little bit more of a roomier hand compartment with a wider pocket, then these, def these gloves are definitely for you. But it does have a wider pocket. Um, and I wanted to use these gloves specifically for mid work and to hit the heavy bag. So that's why I went with 12 ounces, just because I wanted to kind of lean on the side of being a little bit more on the compact side. So in terms of sizing as a 12 ounce glove, I'd say that they're pretty much on point for 12 ounce glove in terms of size and profile, both in terms of the height of the glove from the top of the glove down to the bottom of the cuff and also the width of the glove. The leather on here has a satin finish to it. One really cool detail about these gloves. Well, before I actually say that, one thing you'll notice with a lot of the boutique Mexican made brands is when you're looking at it, with the cuff side down, you'll notice that a lot of brands in Mexico actually put the label facing downwards. So they, basically the, the the font, the script on the patch where you read it usually is facing down towards the glove. And that same that's the same thing with their logos. They typically do that where a lot of other companies or Pakistan made gloves, it's this side up. So the actual patch will be rotated around and you would be reading it across like that with the logo rotated around. But a lot of Mexican made brands, they do it this way. Um, so I guess that's kind of like an indicator for authenticity in a way where uh, they have the patch going uh, the opposite direction. Now, that's not to say that, you know, someone that wanted to make a fake version of these couldn't do that, but it's usually a, a pretty solid indicator of that. One other cool thing aside from this embroidered patch is the actual logo right here is also embroidered into the glove. It does have a nice smooth feel to it. Um, using these for sparring, I would be probably uh, someone that would probably make a piece of tape over this, the medical tape or boxing tape, just to cover it up. I don't foresee this causing any damage or any type of abrasion or cuts to your skin, uh, but there is a little bit of a texture to it. But So to be on the safe side, if you were to use these for firing, I'd probably tape that off. But I believe that logo, it kind of has, to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, it has kind of that the look of like Aztec or Mayan in terms of the design of the glove, I could be completely wrong, so correct me if I am and I apologize, but it has kind of that design and look of Aztec or Mayan, which they were going for. I does see Primero uh, made in Mexico right here. This is all 
cloth and it also has a nice kind of rolled edge on the outside of the corner of the patch. Again, I'd probably tape that off and the letters are all embroidered into the glove. It does have a traditional triple cuffs, triple segmented cuff for the back of the wrist support, as well as the 12 ounce weight tag right here, white piping at the very bottom of the cuff. And you'll also notice that there are welted seams. Uh, that's another traditional Mexican staple that you find in a lot of their boxing equipment. So welted seams throughout the entire glove. And another way to tell if the gloves are authentic or not. I've seen a lot of knockoffs of Mexican gloves, you know, obviously Grant, there's some others that a lot of companies will knock off. And for whatever reason, they oftentimes forget to put the welted seams in there. And that's kind of a dead giveaway, at least for uh, their training gloves. So you have that seam in between the back of the glove and the thumb, black thumb as well. Again, satin type of leather rotating to the palm side. You do have nice long flat laces with plastic tips at the end. It does have a smooth uh, canvas type liner on the inside of the glove. I'd say that the back of the wrist has about an inch of medium density foam padding. The inside of the wrist, you're looking at about an inch as well of firm density foam padding up to right about here on that side, as well as on here. Like a lot of other Mexican gloves, they put a really big emphasis on wrist support and really making sure that it's nice and rigid. Double stitching throughout, white piping that comes up, white piping around the thumb. Grip bar is nice and large and firm as well. You do have double stitching on that side. No ventilated holes on either of the finger compartment or on the inside of the thumb right there. And you do have a leather attached thumb. So you can see a, a very beautiful looking glove from the aesthetics. Um, the red leather on here is really nice as well. Kind of like a blood red. And again, has more of a satin finish to the leather itself. Uh, quality wise, the gloves are pretty good overall. I'd say the high points when it comes to the quality are gonna be the leather, the welted seams, the stitching is done pretty well. Uh, the biggest issue, again, like a lot of Mexican gloves, is the weight. So these gloves are advertised as a 12 ounce glove. Um, when I put them on the scale, I believe the right glove was at 16.1 ounces. And the left glove was at like 15.2. So you're looking at three to four ounces on average overweight for these gloves. So I can only imagine if these are overweight by three to four ounces for a 12 ounce, I'd venture to say like, if you got a 16 ounce glove, you're probably gonna get 19 or 20 ounce gloves if you were to get the 16. So, you know, that's something I just kind of gotten used to with these Mexican brands that when it comes to their training gloves, they're just not on point with weight. Um, now, I wouldn't want to say that they don't care. Maybe they don't care. And that's why they just continue to punch them out and not even really worry about the weight of the gloves. Um, for me personally, when it comes to training gloves, anything that is 12, 14, 16 ounces, I personally don't really care because when I'm training, I'm not sitting there putting my gloves on the scale before I start hitting the bag and say, well, these are 14. I, they wanted, I wanted them to be 16, but they're 14, so I'm not gonna train today. No, I, I, I really don't care. Obviously, when it comes to a fight glove, uh, that's completely different if we're getting to a sanctioned bout you know obviously weight is a huge deal uh, when it comes to that uh, but when it comes to a training glove uh, for me personally when it comes to quality for these reviews obviously i'll let you guys know and be like dude these are way overweight and then you guys can make your judgment from there uh, for me when it comes to weight i look at it like this i got a 12 ounce glove and I, these are like 15 and 16 ounces i, I got a, a more of a deal because now they weigh a little bit more and then for, from a conditioning standpoint i'm getting a little bit more for my conditioning if you want to look at it like that so i, I always look at it kind of like half glass full rather than half empty if you want to call it so um but outside of the weight outside of the weight being you know overweight glove is really well balanced you can see that i mean literally holding just the very back edge of the glove and there's zero sag and again that's because of the wrist support coming down the middle uh again welted seams look done very nicely uh, outside edges, inside liner is nice. Stitching looks pretty solid overall. Area where the thumb meets the index finger is done very nicely as well. Attached thumb is attached properly. Come into the palm, you can see the stitching is done very clean. No bumps or anything in the latex foam, no issues there. So overall construction wise, stitching done well. Leather is very nice quality, inside liner is really good. Only problem I'd say is just the weight. Uh, comfort wise, not my favorite part about the glove and I'm a big comfort guy. So in terms of size, the size of the glove is perfect. Um, the issue here again, and they say, they tell you in their, in their website that it does have a wide pocket. Um, and even for a 
a 12 ounce glove, the, the hand compartment is a little bit on the larger side. I do have kind of a void right here. And what I wish they would done, would have done is I feel like they don't, they need to add like another layer of a softer foam on the inside of the hand compartment that lines up against your hand. So it gives, it kind of fills that void in where you don't feel like it's just kind of hollow right here around your pinky. And if your hands are larger, it'll push against that softer foam, but it won't be restrictive. It'll just give you something to where your, your hand doesn't jolt around, even with hand wraps on. So that's kind of the issue with these gloves. They use a latex foam and you can feel that same latex foam on the inside of the glove. It's just like one piece of latex um, and they don't put any type of buffer between that latex foam and your hands. Uh, and I feel like they should use like a softer foam or something in there just to kind of give you an extra layer of comfort between your hand and the latex. So there's, to me, nothing inside there. And I feel you can definitely feel that void right inside this pinky area. The issue with that too is if you're not punching correctly, which you should, but if you aren't, if you're not always on point, you'll notice that your um, ring finger and your pinky might end up getting kind of blisters around this area because of that void. So it's gonna be really important that you wrap your hands nicely to really fill that void in. Um, and to me, that's kind of the biggest issue when it comes to the comfort of the glove. Now, the positioning of your fingers is perfect. Um, the finger part is nice and deep. It's not too wide, not too narrow. You do have, I guess you can call it like a rolled secondary grip bar. It's not neoprene, but it does cover stitching right here on the inside of the finger compartment. Uh, the thumb is, I wouldn't say awkward in the sense that it, it's curved out. My, my thumb feels like it is pulled in. The problem is the thumb is too shallow. So even uh, when I pull down on my fingers, you can see that the attached thumb doesn't pull down too much. The problem is the depth of it. I feel like this thumb is just too shallow. So my, my finger is right here. That's the tip of my thumb and it kind of jams in. And then when you, when you, when I throw a jab and I'm landing, you know, obviously I'm making a really nice tight fist. I could sometimes feel that my finger will kind of jam into the, the tip of the thumb. So it would have been nice that the, the, the thumb was a little bit deeper and a little bit more parallel. Um, also the piping around the thumb here does get a little bit tight. So you're gonna have to loosen that up as well. Over time, the more you use these gloves, uh, the more they will break in and loosen up. So overall comfort's okay, but there's definitely areas. Uh, and again, that I kind of expect from a Mexican made glove to have that, but just something to keep in mind if you're looking at getting these gloves. Uh, protection and performance. Again, this is a, a latex foam glove. Um, you get excellent pop, a good amount of feedback with these. I'd say that they're right there a step below the middle. So if you're looking at a very protective glove right in the middle, then you have a puncher stock glove right here in the middle. If I have a gauge, I kind of say between a medium glove to a puncher's glove. And that's kind of where this, this glove lands. So you get a good amount of feedback crack. You can really feel your knuckle sink in shock absorption is probably not the best feature of this glove. So if you're somebody that has, you know, a hand injury or have knuckles that are sore, um, you probably want to stay away from these or, and, or get yourself a gel pad to supplement. Uh, but if you're somebody that doesn't have that issue and you really want to feel your knuckles just pierce right through, but get a, le a little bit level of protection from the latex foam, um, then these will definitely be a, definitely be a glove uh, for you. I know th those of you are going to ask, well, can you use these gloves for sparring? It's the same answer I have for any of the other uh, Mexican made style, I guess, puncher's gloves, if you want to call it. If you get them in 16 ounce or even 18 or 14, just depending on your weight class, if the person that you're sparring with is completely okay with it, then just to me, there's no problem. Just make sure that they're laced up nicely. You have the protection you need. They're taped off. I mean, I've used Reyes in sparring. I've also sparred people that use Reyes against me. I'm not the type of person that really worries about that type of thing, unless they're coming in with, with 12 or 10 ounce gloves and I'm sparring with 16s and that's an issue. But if they're 16 ounce glove, then I tend not to be really too worried about it. But again, it just depends on who you're sparring or what gym you're training at. And sometimes they have very specific uh, guidelines to go with. So uh, but I don't find that there's an issue with these gloves when it comes uh, to sparring. Cost wise, these gloves retail at $197. Um, so if you want to round up, they're about $200. I do think that for the price that you're paying for these gloves, they're a little bit on the high side. And the only reason I say that is in that $200 range, there's a lot of great gloves. Now I know these are made in Mexico. So for those of you that really want that Mexican made craftsmanship, that rugged feel, that latex foam, then these might be really good for you. The issue I have with them is mainly just the comfort. Obviously being overweight is completely subjective. For me, it's not a big deal, but 
Again, if you're somebody that really wants something accurate with the way, if you want a 16 and you ordered 16, then you probably won't get it with this glove. But I feel like at 200, there's so many gloves now in that price range that you can go down or up from um, that I feel perform better than this glove um, at $200. So that, that's the big thing with me. I think they look solid. Uh, overall, the quality is really nice. My biggest concern with this glove is just gonna be kind of the comfort. It's essentially like a Casanova glove. So that's really what you're getting with this. If you're completely okay with that, then by all means, that's completely up to you. But me personally, at $200, there's, there's several gloves I can think of that I'd probably pick over these um, just because I put the comfort in the hanger ergonomics is kind of number one on my list when it comes to um, finding the right glove for me when it comes to my training. So just my opinion on that. If you guys have any questions or comments, you guys put them down below in the comments box. Put the link in the description box where you can find these Primero made in Mexico boxing gloves. I'll see you guys later. Peace.